Clean architecture and the vertical slice architecture are two very popular approaches to organizing your .NET applications. At first look, they don't really have much in common. One is a layered architecture and the other one tries to be as flat as possible. However, it's not too difficult to move from a clean architecture structure into vertical slice architecture and that's what i'm going to show you in this video we're going to refactor a project that's using clean architecture into vertical slices so let's dive in here i have the event reminder application that's implemented using the clean architecture you can see the application layer domain layer infrastructure and persistence layer the presentation layer is also our executable api and you can see we have our controllers here. What I'm going to do is to migrate the invitations controller and all of the respective endpoints inside into vertical slices. If you want to code alongside me and learn a few things along the way, you can grab the source code for this video completely for free from the pinned comment under this video. If you got the source code, let's start with this refactoring. And if you didn't, you can just follow along with the rest of the video. Let's first examine the structure that I have here. We have the controllers in the API project and we're going to refactor the invitations controller from a layer structure into vertical slices. The controller itself is very straightforward. It just takes in an incoming request, packages the request into a query or a command object and sends it using mediator. The actual handlers are going to live inside of the invitations feature folder in the application project and you can see we are grouping the commands, events, and queries under the respective folders. The handlers themselves are referencing the database context, repositories, and our domain entities, which live in the domain project. So let's start at the top from the controller by creating a top level folder that's going to contain our application features. I'm going to call this the features folder. And inside of it, I'm going to create a specific feature folder for my invitations features. Now I'm going to grab my invitations controller and I'm going to move it into the invitations folder. So this is step number one. The next thing I'm going to do is make this a partial class. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can start moving the individual endpoints into separate classes and more specific feature folders. So let's start with the get by ID endpoint. I'm going to create a new feature folder inside of the invitations folder and let's call this the get invitation by ID. This is the name of my feature. I'm going to take the invitations controller and I'm going to copy it into the get invitation by ID folder. I still have the original invitations controller open and I'm going to get rid of the get by ID endpoint. Now I'm going to rename the file inside of the get invitation by id folder and i'm going to call it the get invitation by id endpoint i'm not going to rename any of the other components and we can simplify this part of the invitations controller slightly by getting rid of the abi controller inheritance i'm also going to remove the constructor and all of the remaining endpoints that are not the get by id endpoint so this is all that's left inside of my invitations controller, but actually this represents my get by ID endpoint. So our vertical slice feature is starting to get some structure. Now, if I open up the application layer and navigate to the invitations and then queries and then get invitation by ID folder, this is where my query and query handler implementation are defined. So I'm just going to take them and move them into my get invitation by ID feature. So now my query object and the respective query handler are living inside of the same folder. Right next to them is my API endpoint, which wraps up this single feature. And you can consider this a distinct vertical slice. How I like to look at it is my slices represent my application features. And the simplest way to visualize this is to look at your API endpoints. Each API endpoint represents a unique feature and a unique vertical slice. The benefit of structuring your solution like this is that you get all of the components related to a specific feature right next to each other in the same folder. This greatly improves the cohesion of your design because things that are tightly related to each other are also placed next to each other in your solution structure. I'm also going to apply the adjust namespaces refactor for my feature folder and this might cause an interesting issue, if I navigate to the endpoint itself, you will see that I'm getting some compiler warnings. This is because my endpoint is now living in a different namespace 
from my partial invitations controller. So I have to make sure that they stay in the same namespace. And I'm going to simplify the other calls here because I can rely on type inference for my generic methods. So this is more of a nitpick from my side, but I like to keep the namespace structure consistent. Let's close this down and let's move over to the next feature. And we're going to pick up some speed here. The next feature is going to be get pending invitations. So I'm going to create a new folder here that I will call get pending invitations. I'm going to close down the get invitation by ID folder and start by copying my controller. Let's rename this to get pending invitations endpoint. I'm going to get rid of the API controller, the constructor, the endpoints that are not the get pending invitations endpoint. And this is what we are left with. I also have to remove this endpoint from my original invitations controller. With the endpoint in place, I'm going to grab the query and the query handler and I'm going to move them into the get pending invitations folder. At this point, you can go ahead and fix the namespaces. I'm not going to do this to not cause any more conflicts with the invitations controller partial class. Now let's go over to the next feature, which is the get sent invitations endpoint. Again, I'm going to create a folder, which is going to be called get sent invitations. Then I'm going to copy my controller instance inside and let's call this the get sent invitations endpoint. Inside of my endpoint, I'm going to get rid of the constructor. Let's just leave the endpoint that we had left. And in the base invitation controller, I'm going to get rid of this endpoint to not define it twice. I'm only left with two endpoints here, so we are nearly done. I'm going to grab the query and the query handler and move them into the respective feature folder. You can see that they are now in the get sent invitations folder. And let's see what other endpoints we have. We have the endpoint for accepting an invitation and then another one for rejecting an invitation. And these are commands. So far we were working with queries. So let's do the accept invitation feature. I'm going to create another feature folder and let's copy the controller inside. Now I'm going to call this the accept invitation endpoint and we're going to do the same thing remove the constructor remove the api controller and just leave the endpoint then i'll go over to the application project and since i already migrated all of my queries i can get rid of the queries folder so i'm going to delete it in the commands folder let's grab the files for the accept invitation command and let's move them to our accept invitation feature. We already have our accept invitation endpoint, but now we also have the accept invitation command, which represents our intent to accept a particular invitation with this specific invitation ID. We also have the validator for this command, and you will notice that I'm missing the validation errors. This is defined inside of my application project, and I'm going to move this over in just a moment. And we also have the accept invitation command handler, which implements the actual business logic. If I go back to my application project, inside of the core folder, I have the validation errors, and I'm just going to copy this file, and I'm going to nest it in the root folder for our invitation features. And I'm going to get rid of everything inside of this class that is not related to accepting or rejecting invitations. So these are the two nest static classes that I'm going to need and I'm going to get rid of everything else. So now if I go back to my command validator for the accept invitation command, you will see that it's compiling because now it can reference the specific error that it wants to set when the invitation ID is not present. And now we are left with just one endpoint in the invitations controller, which is the reject endpoint. Let's follow the same logic as so far, create a reject invitation feature folder. Inside of it, I'm going to copy my controller instance. From the original controller, I'm going to remove the endpoint so that everything that is a part of my controller is just the constructor definition and implementing the base API controller. In the reject invitation endpoint, First, I'm going to rename this file to be the reject invitation endpoint. And then I'm going to get rid of the constructor and the API controller base class. And all I'm left with is just my specific endpoint. Then I'm going to open up the application layer, find this command instance and take all of the files from here and move them into my feature folder. So this is the reject invitation feature. So let's move over the files. And now we have our reject invitation endpoint, the respective command, the command validator and also the respective command handler. The approach I'm using here is using controllers 
to define my API endpoints, but there are some alternatives like using minimal APIs or some open source libraries like fast endpoints, but the end result is more or less the same. Now, does it make sense to continue using Mediator if you are using vertical slices and all of the files related to a single feature are already organized together inside of the project? Well, I would say yes, if you want to use the other features that Mediator has to offer, mainly the pipeline behaviors for solving cross-cutting concerns. It's much easier to do this with Mediator because you get strong typing and a very flexible implementation rather than doing this with middleware or action filters. But if you don't want to use Mediator, well, you don't have to, but in my opinion, it's still valid to continue using Mediator. If I go back for a moment to the application project and open up the invitations folder, you'll see that we migrated our commands. So let's get rid of the commands folder. And what we are left with is a few event handlers inside of the events folder, and these could actually become our new features. So let's move all of them into our invitations feature folder. And this is another way you can look at your vertical slices. It's not just API endpoints. I also have an invitation accepted feature, which contains a domain event handler for the invitation accepted domain event. And what's happening inside of this handler is creating an attendee and then storing that in the database, but we are also publishing an attendee created event. We have another handler in this folder, which publishes an integration event when handling the invitation accepted domain event. So we have two handlers for the same domain event, one is doing some business logic and storing something in the database. The other one is creating an invitation accepted integration event, which is meant to be consumed by other applications in our system. And then it's publishing this integration event using a message broker. So this should give you a different perspective of how you could look at application features or vertical slices. I also have the invitation rejected slice and the invitation sent slice. They all revolve around handling domain events and publishing integration events. So this leaves us with a structure where all of our features related to invitations are under one folder in the top level project, which is also my ASP.NET Core Web API. The invitations folder in my application layer is now empty and I can go ahead and delete it. And I would follow the same approach to flatten all of the other feature folders that I have here for the other use cases in my application. Now, one more thing that you can start doing once you have your vertical slices is to get rid of unnecessary abstractions and simplify your implementations. For example, here I'm using an IDB context abstraction, which is more or less a pointless wrapper around the F core. I can get rid of this and just reference the database context. The class is called the event reminder db context and i can inject this directly from the constructor and you will see that nothing changed in my handle method because most abstractions around the f core are just wrappers that don't really hide much of the implementation details of course if you have some other reasons to continue using your abstractions, I encourage you to continue doing so, but I also think you should give it a second thought if it's going to simplify your overall design. Once you have migrated all of your application features, the next action step would be to start getting rid of your projects. For example, you can move the persistence project and the EF core definition under a feature folder in the ASP.NET Core Web API. The same logic would apply for the infrastructure layer and the classes that we have inside. Most of these abstractions can be used directly without hiding them behind an interface. For example, the user identifier provider. I'm using it in this query. And instead of referencing the interface, I can reference the actual implementation. The only caveat is that I have marked it as internal, but if it was living in the same project, I would be able to reference it. If I make it public, it's going to be accessible inside of my query handler and I will be able to inject it from the constructor. The reason that we define an interface for most of the external concerns is to be able to depend on abstractions. However, the user identifier provider is already an abstraction and you can inject it and use the public methods that it's exposing without having to reference an interface. Clean architecture, on the other hand, promotes the use of interfaces so that you can abstract away the external concerns. In this case, the HTTP context accessor. If you want to learn more about vertical slice architecture, then you should watch this video next. Also, you can grab the source code for this video completely for free from the pinned comment. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay awesome.